Hey guys, welcome to Planning with Crystal. So today's video is all about the Hotel Chocolat Velvetizer Machine. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your very first hot chocolate with your new Velvetizer machine. I'm also going to prepare a hot chocolate using Hotel Chocolat's hot chocolate and also a powder hot chocolate. So you can kind of see the difference when using ground chocolate flakes versus chocolate powder. I'll also tell you about the temperature of the machine and some other little bits of information that I think you might find useful. So when you get your new Velvetizer machine, what you're going to want to pull out ready to make your drinks, you are going to get two of these cups and these ceramic cups are dishwasher safe and obviously hand wash safe, they're also microwave safe. And they are designed to look like a cacao shell, I believe, which is why they've got this rather funny design. You can also kind of stack them as well if you want to put them in the cupboard. One get great thing about the cups, they don't get too hot when you've got your drink in, so you can drink out of them and they won't uh, burn your hands or anything like that. And they also tell you the perfect amount of milk to put in the velvetizer. When you first get it out of the box, you're obviously going to unwrap it all and you're obviously going to give everything a thorough clean. The main components, it's super simple. You've got this stand that your hot chocolate machine sits on. You have got the hot chocolate pot machine, velvetizer, whatever you want to call it itself. It's got a mark there that says max with a line and you can see that on the other side. So no matter which hand you use the machine with, you'll be able to see the max fill line. And that is really important because that is the maximum amount of liquid that you can put in the machine. Generally, you're going to put milk in, but you can prepare drinks with water. I've done it and it does work. It, obviously, for hot chocolate, it just makes a much more pleasant drink if you use milk. And you can use any kind of milk. If you're using oat, soy, rice, whatever kind of milk you want, they will all make a good hot chocolate in this machine. So you've got your little lid like this. It's got a rubber seal going around it. And you have also got your little whisk that looks like this. So what you do is you're going to get your whisk after you've done all your cleaning you're going to put that there into the machine and it magnetizes so it won't even fall out no matter how much wiggling about you do very important that you put the whisk in first you make sure it's magnetized and sat still because if it hasn't and you put your liquid in and it's not quite adhered then it just will not spin and you just will not get any mixing or anything so it shouldn't be a massive issue because like I said, it's magnetised, it pretty much does it for you, but just something to be aware of, especially when you first start using the machine. So you're going to make sure that your whisk is sitting in place and magnetised. Everything's clean, you've got your lid nearby for when we get to that stage. Then what you're going to do is you're going to get your cup or whatever you're using to mark out the amount of milk you want. But like I said, these are perfect because they do um, kind of give you that maximum amount of milk that you can put in here so you always get the kind of perfect size drink for these cups. So I'm just using a kind of standard semi-skimmed milk that I always tend to use in my machine personally but like I said I have tried it out with like vegan milks and other types of milks and it all works fine. So you've got your milk, you pour it in the velvetizer up to that line. We know that have got the right amount of milk like I've said because um, I know that that cup provides me with that kind of perfect amount tilting it a little bit there to show you but it is at the right amount. The other thing to really bear in mind always put your milk in before your powder or your flakes. If you don't do it this way you'll end up with a situation where it doesn't mix properly and you end up with lots of chocolate residue at the bottom. So the advice in the manual and my advice is always put the milk in or the liquid in first. So for the first drink, I'm going to be using milky hot chocolate, which is my own personal favourite, comforting, mellow, not too sweet, and packed with deep notes of cocoa. So this is a lovely, milky tasting hot chocolate. Hotel Chocolat, I do a whole range. They're always bringing out new flavours. So there's lots of different options. So it tells us to put six heaped teaspoons of the chocolate in here. So here you can see those chocolate flakes just sitting on top of your milk and of course you're going to put your lid on and then it obviously plug it in your machine and everything. 
Then it's just as simple as pushing this little button on the side until it lights up like so and your machine is going. And it takes around about two and a half minutes to prepare this hot chocolate. You can actually take the lid off. I guess the lid is there to kind of protect it from any splattering, but in reality that never happens. And it's also to keep the heat in. But so long as it stays on that rest, it will keep mixing. So if I just give you a little overhead shot there of it doing its thing and I'll speed this part up like I said it takes two and a half minutes but I'll speed it up so you can sort of see how it looks Okay, so there it is, it's completed its little spin. You can see there are sometimes some little chocolate flakes stuck there on the whisk, but it cleans off really easy and I'll talk to you about cleaning in just a second. I'm just gonna show you the temperature of the hot chocolate because I know people like to know about these things. So I'm not touching the side or any of the metal components because of that give a funny kind of reading. I'm just gonna see how hot the hot chocolate is. And I could pour this out into a cup, but I think because the cup is cold, it will just reduce the temperature straight away. So I'm just gonna check exactly what temperature reading we get for this one okay so that temperature is now starting to drop i got it up to like 67 and now it's dropping down to like 66 the longer i hold it here so we're going to say it's around about 66. so the jug itself has got a spout on either side so you can pour it again from either side and just still get a great kind of pour with it it's got a lovely kind of sturdy metal handle and it's not super heavy but it's also not flimsy either so I'm going to pour out the hot chocolate for you now I'm not actually going to do that in the white cups because you can't actually see what the hot chocolate looks like very well in them so for the purposes of the demonstration I'm just going to use a glass mug like this so you can really see uh, one great thing is because we have the whisk magnetized inside it means that it doesn't sort of slide out and into the drink um, which can happen with some other kind of milk frothers. So this is the milky hot chocolate and this is what the kind of chocolate flakes look like. This is actually a classic hot chocolate but it's the same um, the same thing, the same kind of consistency. This is what they look like and you don't want to use any chocolate. If you think of sort of grating your own chocolate you could totally do that but you do not want it any thicker than this because it just won't melt and mix. So in terms of the hot chocolate maker, this is what it now looks like. So all I'm gonna do is give it a quick soapy wash and a quick dry, come back and I will make you the other hot chocolate and we'll see what that looks like. So I have just given it a quick clean and it's ready to make another hot chocolate. This time we're gonna do it with the powdered hot chocolate and the hot chocolate I'm gonna be using is the Malteser one, but it's exactly the same if you want to use like Cadbury's or any other powdered hot chocolate that you like. So again, clean pots and we're gonna pop the little magnetic whisk. One important thing to note, if you are making more than one hot chocolate at a time, once you've made that first hot chocolate, you need to, when you've cleaned it or given it a rinse, you need to rinse it with at least a quick dash of cold water and that just resets the thermometer inside it. Again, this is what the manufacturer advises. If you don't do that, then it runs the risk of the machine thinking the milk is hotter than it is and not heating it sufficiently to mix the chocolate and make you that hot chocolate again. So just make sure you give it a quick rinse. I mean, if I'm making one after the other, what I would normally do is just give it a quick rinse with cold water and then instantly make the next one because it's you know it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of residual chocolate if you're making another hot chocolate so there we go so this being a powder it actually says just add water but i'm going to do it with milk so we can compare it to our ground hot chocolate obviously using the same milk and everything like i said this is just your standard powder hot chocolate i'm just going to put four in of this because this is a lot more chocolate than the ground um, when you start picking it up if you know what i mean getting it all over the place that's one thing with the powdered chocolate it does have more of a tendency to kind of get everywhere um again i'll just press a little button on the side get it going 
So this is what it looks like mixing and I will speed that up for you now. And there we are done with the powdered chocolates. So I don't know if you noticed, the machine itself is very, very quiet. It can barely hear it when it's on, which is great. I'm just gonna take another quick temperature here. Interestingly enough, with the powdered hot chocolate and the second time round, it doesn't seem quite as hot. So it's given me a reading of 63.6. So another see-through mug and I'll just pour it out for you. And that's what you're left with in the machine but like I said it doesn't really stick so it cleans really really easily so that is the powdered hot chocolate Maltesers to be exact and if I then put the Hotel Chocolat hot chocolate next to it there you go so they look pretty similar um the Malteser one's obviously much lighter in color this one's much darker but this is made with proper kind of ground grated chocolate whereas this one is made with the chocolate powder which has obviously got quite a bit of sugar and things added to it rather than just being the pure chocolate my personal preference i definitely prefer the grated chocolate hotel chocolat do incredible hot chocolates i love the machine either way to make any hot chocolate because you don't get that sort of settling at the bottom of the cup. It just makes a perfectly blended hot chocolate. You don't get any powder, like I said, or, or chocolate flakes or whatever it is you're using. None of it settles at the bottom. It just makes the most delicious, amazingly blended hot chocolate. It really is amazing. Personally, like I said, I prefer using Hotel Chocolat's hot chocolate because they do so many and they are delicious. They've just recently started selling them in these like bags which are to refill the um these little containers or you could put it in a tin or what have you so i've just picked up a couple of flavors recently the vanilla white drinking chocolate and the mint drinking chocolate i've tried both of them before and they are amazing they do such a range of hot chocolates honestly it's just great i mean if you would like to see some more velvetizer videos let me know leave me some comments underneath i can do different kind of hot chocolate blends i can add different flavors and stuff to it if you want to see how I do that um, or if you'd like to see me prepare it with water or you'd like to see a video of me cleaning it or whatever it is you think would be useful drop me a comment and I will see what I can do so sometimes with these hot chocolates to make them a little bit fancy I do this for the kids but I do it for me too who am I kidding this is my kind of preferred squirty cream because the um, applicator on the top just sort of lends itself to this So I just like to kind of cover it in cream. And then what I do is I just drop on some chocolate flakes and have this little box of mini marshmallows that I keep nearby. Then I just drop the marshmallows on there and it just makes a really kind of luxurious treat. Love making it for the kids and for myself as well, because you know, who wouldn't want that? So I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. It lets me know you're enjoying the content I'm producing. And I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to be notified when my next video goes live. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.